Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Zach Cohen. Zach is a, a chief of um, operational officer at Trulio. Trulio is a hyper-growth Vancouver, Vancouver startup solving global identity challenges associated with international regulatory compliance, fraud prevention, and trust and safety online. Zach, thank you for taking your time and coming to our interview today. Hey, Boris, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Zach, can you tell us a short story about Trulio? Why there was a need for your solution? Yeah, I think, Boris, it's really a, a three-part story, to be honest. Um, you know, the first is the evolution of the global citizen, who now we see moves from country to country, engages in cross-border activity regularly. Um, you know, the second part of the story is really the reality of our transition from a physical interaction to uh, the majority of the digital world today. And, and more importantly, uh, the last part of our story is really the equality and financial inclusion angle. Uh, whereas in our belief, everyone, regardless of their background or their demographic or the country that they live in, um, frankly, they should all have the same ability to access the online economy. And so, you know, when you look at those three stories holistically and the challenges that, that they all present, it really boils down to identity. Um, and how do you establish trust online? How do you prove that you are who you say you are online um, and the like? So it was really with those in mind that we, uh, you know, chose to, to, to challenge uh, and focus on that mission. And that's how truly grew to one of the largest online identity verification marketplaces today. Uh, we connect our customers to a, a single plug and play solution. It includes hundreds of identity sources and services. We cover about 5 billion people uh, in close to over uh, 150 countries around the world. Wow. So, can you perhaps explain uh, what truly offers to the industry in terms of products and uh, solutions, how it differs from other software providers, because there are a lot on this in this category, and what are some examples of your customers' use cases? Yeah, the industry has grown a lot in the last, uh, in the last several years. And I think the, you know, I'll probably answer your question, the, the last part first, uh, when we talk about use cases that we typically encounter. Uh, the, the two most common are regulatory and then trust and safety. Uh, and so the first one, a regulatory use case is really compliance and around that compliance obligation that you have, uh, that typically comes as a, as a know your customer KYC or anti-money laundering, AML, uh, fraud prevention type use case. Essentially that arises anytime an account is created online that ultimately results in in money changing hands, right? So you'll need to identify the individual or the business that is creating that account while they're doing it. We see that a lot in um, you know, e-commerce marketplaces, payment services, FinTech, traditional FinServe, et cetera. The, the other use case is, is more a trust and safety one. And, and that's actually almost faster growing today. It's, it's often around risk and fraud, uh, the security of your ecosystem. How do you eliminate uh, fake profiles, bad actors, fraudulent attempts on your network, et cetera. So it, it's a similar verification process uh, of a person or a business, but, but you take a different approach. And, and we see it very often in the sharing economy, the gig economy, uh, social networks, you know, any service that's not really under a financial regulator. And so uh, those are the primary use cases we see for online identity verification. Uh, I, I think that you know, Boris, when we talk about differentiation, uh, you know, we could have a conversation about that all day. Um, but if I have to uh, drill it down to the single most important one uh, in the complex environment that we face today, it really comes down to a holistic view. Uh, when you scour the, you know, the internet and, and solutions for identity verification uh, providers, you'll find a lot of point solutions. But what Trulio's approach has always been is a holistic and layered one. And what that means is, you know, we want to apply the right solution for the right risk-based approach and the right use case. So if we talk about those two different use cases I just mentioned, there might be very different solutions and services that you want to apply. And, and having a holistic view really allows you to uh, include a flexibility in that approach uh, that can also evolve over time if the regulatory environment changes or if you want to launch in a new country tomorrow, 
and you, you don't want to make a bunch of technical changes or have to add a, a variety of new solutions each time you encounter a change. You want to be able to use something that has already you know, scoped that out and has the market intelligence, having seen hundreds and millions of transactions in their network, to be able to choose the right solution at the right time for the customer. So, so that's the biggest differentiation that we bring to the market for our customers. Okay, okay. So we are currently in the midst of the major crisis, the most disruptive period in uh, to our society in peacetime history. And the pandemic is having a serious implication for businesses across the globe as they adapt to the new normal of operations. And it is important to establish trust uh, remotely and fight a prison uh, cyber fraud. Can you perhaps elaborate more on this topic and how you guys are helping your customers uh, in the society as a whole during this time. What tips do you have for risk managers to help their organizations to stay at the course during the COVID crisis? Boris, you hit the nail on the head. It's a situation environment we've never seen before. It's very unique. And I think one of the biggest uh, factors that's playing to that is a digital interaction has gone from a nice to have in many cases to a must have. If you do not have a digital channel today, your businesses are pretty much folding up in large part. It's very risky not to have that. And what that's also increased uh, from a user perspective is a lot of new participants, uh, folks or demographics that might not have been inclined to use uh, an online channel before or now being forced to, right? They need their critical services or, or access to, to new solutions that they didn't have before. And when you have more people, it naturally creates two different uh, you know, um, results from that. One is increased scrutiny from the consumer. Right now, I'm gonna be experimenting with a lot of different solutions online, so the one I choose is going to represent the best experience possible, and also it's fraud. Wherever there's going to be massive increases in volume and transactions, the bad actors and the fraudulent attempts are going to subsequently also increase. Right. So those are those are how we've seen in the market the changes since uh, COVID uh, really started escalating around the world. And I, I think that, you know, when truly talks about how we're helping or how we're trying to address that situation, um, you know, we really come off on it from this experience that if we can create those digital interactions safer, if we can create a safe environment for those interactions, we're all better off. And so we focus very heavily on how we can create and onboard users a lot easier, make it very simple to launch in the same day, you know, be able to provide that intelligence about which services you should use considering the use case that you're encountering specifically. And we've even offered a lot of free or very low cost solutions to bridge that gap for organizations that are all of a sudden in a, in a panic situation that they need to go online quickly. Um, and I, I think for, you know, you mentioned risk managers, which is a great aspect. Um, you know, I, I really believe that risk managers need to start thinking about technology solutions as a partnership model. Um, you know, doing your own due diligence is very important, but you need to find partners who aren't just selling a solution that are, are really talking to you about a strategy and that strategy and how it can work, how it can evolve over time and how it can address the multiple challenges that you're particularly facing and the ones you forecast you might face in the future. So it's really around that partnership model and, and having someone who can bring multiple options to the table that fits your specific use case the best. All right. <coughs> so the advance of uh, AI, uh, specifically, specifically deep fakes, uh, fraud in general, makes us all uh, concerning, especially considering upcoming election in, in the States. Now we are also facing uh, a perspective of a uh, health uh, surveillance uh, state. Uh, the governments of many countries spy on their citizens to prevent the spread of the disease. Uh, do you have some special view on that? Uh? Yeah, we do. I mean, it's a very uh, serious and, and, and topical conversation. When we think about it, it, it really has come down to balance balance of getting the outcome that you desire but but balance between maintaining uh, data privacy and protection uh, and, and and the security of your consumer information now we've seen you know some very uh, dramatic data breaches in recent memory and we've seen the abuse of consumer data uh, across a variety of, of different cases and, and, and none of that is good 
And I think that the regulators have really come up with that in terms of how do we protect data privacy? How do we mandate appropriate use of data to the best of our ability? And, and consumers are becoming more discerning as well. You know, we just did a huge survey uh, in the UK and the US around, does the user want more speed or security of their data? And, and, the, and the pendulum is swinging very clearly towards security. So consumer rights, uh, in terms of how we protect their data, is very important today. And so when we're talking about AI solutions and, and how, what, what do we want at the end of it, you really have to balance those two needs without sacrificing one or the other. And I think, you know, the other aspect that, that's important is I, I don't believe that you can detach the technology from the application. And so we've seen businesses that are pursuing certain applications of their technology from an economic standpoint. Right. It's an opportunistic, um, you know, situation where perhaps your technology wasn't designed for that use case for that purpose, but hey, we'll make it work or, you know, it can be just stacked on technology on top of it. But if you discount or disregard the pitfalls of the conversation of the question overall, then you aren't necessarily, or I think you're doing a disservice to, uh, you know, technology as a whole and to uh, the original design of your technology. I know it's very close to our founders um, and our management and our entire company's um, view in terms of how we use our technology. And it is not opportunistic. Uh, it drives a mission-based principle in terms of including more people, not excluding them, and doing it safely, not... Uh, you know, potentially risking their data being shared with organizations or with individuals that are shared. So we feel pretty strong about that. Um, but I do believe at the end, we can work together uh, towards getting those solutions, but just with keeping those major principles in mind. All right, perfect, thank you. Uh, can I, could you elaborate more on what are the major trends in the identity verification uh, space and what we should, uh, expect from you guys in the future? I mean, it's an exciting one for us. Uh, I think for a lot of people, because what we're realizing is every single interaction we have online, your identity is tied to it. Um, and, and, and the way your identity changes over time and, and, and how persistent it is throughout the network, uh, it creates a really cool opportunity to uh, forecast the future of, of the world. Right. So um, I, I think that what we're seeing and particularly uh, what we're focused on is really those broader and deeper layers of a network approach to identity. And so, you know, you really want to apply uh, a seamless experience that reduces fraud and reduces risk as well as satisfying the compliance obligations. And, and what that means for identity in the future is you need multiple layers of solutions and you need to consider holistically the entire global environment to get there. And I believe that uh, a lot of focus should be put towards um, that uh, layered approach and broadening that even more so that we can answer some of these more uh, you know, sensitive questions around fraud and data protection. There are a lot of cases where an individual doesn't wanna share all of their you know, passport information, or they, they, they want to um, limit who accesses those types of tools. And, and so you know, we really have to keep that in mind and build a solution that can answer all of that uh, advancement and evolution of the consumer uh, preference, but as well enable to include more people if they don't have all of the documentation or the information that we come to expect. Um, identifying someone in Africa or you know, a, a developing country is very different than doing it in the US. And even within the U.S. or the Netherlands, for example, or Canada, you have unbanked individuals. So there are cohorts within your own country. And so you really have to apply multiple tiers and layers. And that's sort of where I see the market going. Um, I think the other aspect is today truly is a back-end tool in many ways. We talk about a, a, you know, a marketplace of solutions you can apply. But, but more and more, we are now uh, launching towards front-end tools as well. So you can have a seamless end-to-end -end experience and take advantage of all of our years of, of intelligence around what solutions work when and, and apply that you know, consumer-facing directly in an application. It's a technical advancement, but what it means is we are providing even more flexibility and more um, you know, faster go-to-market strategies for customers or for folks that are challenged with, how do I identify my population when we're launching? 
Okay, fantastic. And the last question, uh, how way at the global risk community from your perspective con can contribute to the process of better understanding of this uh, complex world of risk? Yeah, it's a, it's a cool one. Um, and I, I wanted, I mean, you play a big part of it and I do as well, and that's information sharing. And how do we increase the amount of information sharing we, we have between risk officers around what approaches work, what we encountered in one country versus another, um, what are you know, new and increasing threats to our applications that we need to protect ourselves against. And I think that you know, if I look back five years ago, compliance officers and risk officers, they held their cards a little closer to their chest. It was almost... Um, you know, not wise, or, or, or there were additional risks with just sharing what you do and how you do it. We need to provide more safe places for that to happen, right? Because you can learn so much from someone who's been through it, um, and you don't make the same mistakes. So we can reduce fraud, we can reduce regulatory fines, we can reduce, um, you know, just we can increase our, our compliance and our identity measures if we work together. And I, I think in a similar light, uh, those conversations need to happen more with the regulators themselves as well. I, I truly believe that the regulators are there to create a safe environment for everybody. They don't want to inhibit commerce. They don't want to inhibit access, but we have to do it in a safe way. So having those conversations with regulators more frequently between uh, risk officers, compliance officers, technology providers, regulators, and businesses, we can come to a much better solution around how to approach these questions and challenges and do it successfully. And I think we have pockets of that that are really great examples of it uh, in Australia and the U.S in the UK um, and we just need to do more and, and that takes a, a, you know, an organization and effort but we'll all be better off for it. Okay, thank you Jack. Jack uh, it was a real pleasure to have you on the, our interview. I wish you and your company great success uh, with your future growth plans and I hope uh, that our members will find this interview very uh, interesting and useful. I hope so as well, Boris. Thanks so much for having me. If anyone has any questions, truly.com, very easy. Uh, you'll find all your answers there. Thank you.